Okay, so I'm Barry Goodman. Um, I know one or two of you. Um, Ab, we've had um, correspondence by email a bit, and uh, lovely people from um, Red Caps. I've, I've, we've known your side for a very long time in uh, at least two different names. Um, so uh, nice to see you there. Um, and uh, hello, Australia. It's uh, it's good to see you. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I was a primary school teacher and head teacher uh, for many years, and um, I did Morris dancing, country dancing in schools um, pretty much all the time that I was teaching. When I was my first headship, um, I had two Morris teams in the school. I had a, a Northwest and a Border Morris team. And we used to because this is back in the days when head teachers actually had a bit of time to go and spend some time at lunchtime teaching children to do something different. It was lovely. Those were the days. Um, so I did have two Morris teams and we used to get we used to have a, a barbecue every year in the pub across the road from the school. Um, and the parents used to come. I used to get a couple of Morris local Morris teams to come down. My kids would dance and we used to have this fantastic evening, which was uh, which was a really good sort of culmination of what we had over the year. So that was lots of fun. Um, I used to run the um, Hertfordshire Folk Dance Festival, which was a schools, big schools thing. We used to get as many as 900 children coming and dancing. We used to run workshops for the teachers, teach them the dances, um, and uh, and then they would turn up on the day and uh, they would do the dances like a Kaylee, really. Um, I used to call everything with a live band. And uh, we did Maypole as well there. And one year we had 11 Maypoles. Um, and if you can think about how much space you need for one maypole, we filled an arena. We absolutely filled an arena. It was fabulous. Um, so I've done that. Uh, I've do, done lots of workshops in schools while I was teaching and, and when I, after I retired. Um, done a bit of longsword in schools as well. Uh, and I do an annual, well, I do a, two or three times a year, I do a thing called Dancing for Fun, which is run by the local educational museum called the British Schools Museum, where my wife is a volunteer, uh, and we do it as a half-term activity. And that's really what I'm going to talk about today, is what I do there, um, largely because Ginny and co are going to be doing talking more specifically about doing stuff in schools with Morris, so that's kind of where they're, where they're, where they're at. Although I've done lots of that, I thought I'd do this as well to give you an idea of other stuff that you can do and ways around actually teaching the children. So um, so that's where I'm going to be talking about. So we do this thing at the British Schools Museum in Hitchin. Um, we advertise it. Um, we insist on parents coming along to this one because uh, it, it, it's, it makes life a lot simpler for us if the parents are actually there. Um, and uh, children, we, we ask for children, I think, I think we ask for seven and upwards, um, but we get lots of toddlers. Uh, because mums bring along their seven-year-old and the toddler, and the toddler doesn't want to sit around playing with toys. They want to get up and dance. So you never know what you're going to get. And sometimes we get some very, very small children, and sometimes we don't. Um, fortunately, some of the volunteers who are at the, at the British schools are, are usually looking after their grandchildren at the time, some of whom are old enough to help out with others. So that can be quite nice too. So we get a, a, quite a range of, of ages. Um, I always start with a warm-up. Um, the, the way I've always warmed up, uh, children is to play music and get them to do stuff to music so we walk we skip we clap we jump up and down we turn around we wave um we do all sorts of things but it's all and but i i always i always organize it so that it's phrased with the music so so you know, we you know we'll do eight this way and we'll do eight that way and we'll do four or something and four or something else so we're starting to get into the into the feeling of, of how the phrasing goes um with the music that we're going to be going to be dancing to and then we normally start with some some folk dancing, um, and I, I I wrote a resource for the English Folk Dance and Song Society a few years ago called Creative Dancing in Primary Schools, Creative Folk Dancing in Primary Schools, uh, which is available on the EFTIS website, um, and I tend to work with those with that sort of idea in mind. So what I do is um, I work in pairs uh, with the children. Uh, we um, we go through a, one or two standard figures. So we might do a, a, a right hand turn, left hand turn, something like that, maybe a back to back. Um, and then we start putting those together with some music. And then I ask the children to make up something to go into the next bit of music. And I give them some ideas and it could be a clapping thing or it could be a spinning thing or it could be doing somersaults or it could be, you know, what, all sorts of things. We get all kinds of stuff going on. And then we turn that into a dance. 
we spend a lot of time showing us showing those things as well so so once they've had the time to work that out we make sure everybody gets a chance to show what they've done maybe give them another go at it if they're not quite sure and then we put that into a dance so each each group of two is going to be doing three figures plus their own figure sort of thing then we turn that into fours and we do it like a sicilian circle so they have to think of something they can do with four people um uh, beyond the figures that i teach them when we do that so there's a quite a lot of, of of their input going into this thing and thinking about morris dancing you can do that as well you know if you if you if you want to get the children to be creative with their morris dancing you can teach them a little bit and then say right so how how do you think you could follow that up what do you think you could do to to in the same sort of style but let's see if we can make up something of your own which i think is is always a nice thing to do so we do that and then um if we're really brave and we've got old enough children, we might just turn that into squares, um, but we probably won't because uh, usually the kids are too young and I haven't got that much time. So usually we get that far. I, I often also do um, just a very simple set dance with them. It might be something that I make up on the spot. Um, it might be a, a genuine, a genuine dance. It might be something on the spot. And We've got a bit of video coming up in a moment, which is um, a little thing that I did with. So we'd, we'd done all that creative stuff and it was clear that we weren't going to get a a proper set dance taught in the time because we had children of all sorts of ages. So I very quickly threw together two or three figures and um, got them got them doing it. And this is the result. If you can if we can have that video, Pauline, if that's a, a possibility, this was uh, that's the, the most the Morris one. We want the first one. First slide. That's the one. That's the fella. So that's um, just a little thing that we did. Um, it's my grandson. Um, so um, it, it, it's it, it's all fairly straightforward, fairly simple. I've got quite a few helpers there, um, and um, you could you hear what when I was when I was talking there, I was I was telling them to wait, telling them to do the next, wait for the next thing. So trying to get that, and with more time, you could do an awful lot more. But it's it's, a, it's quite a limited time that I have for this particular activity. So um, so we do that. We do a little bit of folk dancing. We have a little sit down. We talk about what we've done. And then we go on. We get the maypole out, which is the thing that they all come for. Um, and uh, next slide is the picture of the maypole. Thank you all. Um, we get the maypole out. Uh, and uh, we, depending on the number of children, again, depends on how many how many ribbons we use. You can see we've got quite a few sitting on the, on the, in the, on the middle there to hold it up. Um, and we're teaching them to hold the ribbons high. If you've done maypole dancing, you will know that the first thing you have to teach children with maypole dancing is hold the ribbons high, otherwise you'll decapitate children as you go around. So um, we, we, we learn about that and lifting and dropping. And then next slide, Pauline, we'll do a dance, which will finish hopefully with some sort of, of, uh, of, of plait. Um, quite often, if it's really small children, all we'll do is dance in towards the maypole, dance out, dance in, dance out and dance round. Um, if I've got, if I can manage it, I will do a plait of some sort. I think we're just dancing around the maypole here by the looks of things. Um, and um, that's always very popular. We don't do too long with the maypole because if you're going to teach maypole, you need, well, in a school, you need half a term um, with at least one lesson a week. Um, to be able to do it well, because maypole is a discipline. It's quite difficult. Um, so that's what I do with the maypole. And then we move on to the Morris. Um, and uh, I've always preferred doing uh, a bit of stick dancing with uh, with young children uh, because um, they really enjoy doing that. And it's, it's kind of easier if you've got a stick in your hands um, to know what you're doing rather than trying to do something with your arms and handkerchiefs and things it's, it makes it more complicated i always love the uh, the the look on the parents faces when we give the sticks out it's 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 a joy you know i say right you're going to have a stick and we're going to be hitting the sticks together and there are parents who are having kittens around the room um i i'd spend 
quite a lot of the first bit of this teaching them how to be safe with the sticks, obviously. Um, so we leave sticks on the ground until we need to use them. Um, we, when we hold them, we always hold them over our right shoulder. Um, uh, and when we're dancing, unless we're actually using them, and I, there they are doing it, holding them on their right shoulders. Thank you, Pauline. Um, and uh, I make sure that's a rule that they stick to. Um, and once we've got that, we then do simple figures. And again, it depends on the children that I've got. Now, sometimes we can be quite we can be quite complex with this. This is the last thing we do usually in the session. So I've got a fair bit of time to do it in. Um, and uh, sometimes we can put some really, really nice figures together. But I usually start them off with a foot up um, and back and then do some simple sticking. Um, I prefer when I'm doing it short term like this to do sticking low. I don't like high sticking um, if they're not used to it uh, because it, it can be quite dangerous um, if they miss. So I, I tend to do my sticking uh, low down. We'll see it in a moment, not yet. Um, and um, uh, because, because, because we're doing, because we're, we're, we're putting that figure uh, in between all the other figures, it gives them a, a, a point, a point of reference um, to come back to. Um, usually do a foot up and a foot down and something else. And if I can really get away with it, we might do, um, uh, we might do a cast. Uh, cast is quite difficult if they're not used to the idea of, of going away from the partner and coming back again. Um, but we did put this particular um, year that I did it, um, we did these figures. So Pauline, if you'd like to run the, run the video, we'll see how they get on. The sticking, by the way, is not necessarily in time with the music. Um, that took, that would take a little bit longer, sadly, uh, but uh, it's not too bad. Yeah, there you go. All sorted, here we come. Intro. Thanks, Pauline. We can stop stream sharing now. Thank you very much. Um, uh, you may have noticed we did we did one set of sticking quietly, um, and uh, that was quite. I thought you know you, you you need to do that as well. You need to to, to let them think about you know how you can do it. It, it. it wasn't particularly in time, but it wasn't a great long session that one. Um, so that's basically how I do how I do uh, that. And I've done quite a lot of Morris teaching of that sort and I've spent a whole morning doing it and, you know, I'll get much, much more results out of it. But that's the basics of what what I always do. As far as music's concerned, I like to have live music. Um, it, it, it works better for me because uh, you can uh, you can adjust it to um, to the, the, the speed that the children can dance at and you can you, you know, you can you can change the A's and B's and so on. So that's great. But I do use recorded music for the warm up because I like to be involved in the warm up. So I usually take along a little bit of PA with me um, and, uh, and my phone and, uh, and whap something on that they can, they can clap to and dance to and jump up and down to at the beginning and I can be involved in that. And I usually do have a backup um, uh, of tunes uh, for the for the Morris and for the, the, the other stuff that I do, um, just in case I need to be more involved um with the with the with the children if there's not enough not not enough adults around to help me i do have quite a lot of adults helpers um again Ginny will be talking more about adult helpers and what to do and how to organize them and things but um i i 
usually find that they they they're very accommodating and children children do need there are some always going to be some children that are going to need some adult help um there are going to be children who have um who are, have some learning difficulty perhaps or some physical difficulty perhaps where having somebody one-to-one -one with them is, is a great help and we we normally try to identify those fairly early on and uh, and help them out in that way so that is basically what I do with my dancing for fun. Um, as I say, I, you know, I, I could talk about all the other stuff, but I know Ginny's got um, a lot of um, uh, more detailed uh, things to talk about there. And I'll, I'll leave it to her to do that because um, I know she's going to be doing that, that very, very well. So, yeah, so that's me. That's what I do. OK, so uh, questions from people, comments? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can I? Yeah. I'll just unmute yourself. Lee. Yeah, Lee. yeah. Hello, Lee. Um. Hello. Uh, you said you spend a bit of time on the safety with sticks thing. Yeah. How How do you usually go with the kids actually being safe with the sticks? So yeah. Well. Um, yes. As As I say, I I when they I always make sure that when they're dancing, the sticks are on the shoulders. I mean, most of them were doing it. You probably noticed there was one dragging a stick, but largely I make sure that they do that. And that's the first thing I do. And I, I might spend quite a lot of time on that. If they're really being awkward, <laughs> they'll, they'll, I'll make sure that they, they, they've got that because that then they're safe. Um, and as I say, I tend, I tend to do low sticking um, because it's a lot safer, especially early on, but I, I, you know, we, we've done it other ways as well, but you have to be, well, if I'm doing high sticking, um, I do a lot of practice at bouncing sticks. So I talk to them about bouncing sticks, about how far to pull the stick back. You know, it's really just a tap. It's just a bounce. And we do a lot of work on that before we go anywhere near dancing. Um, so that's basically how I do it. And, and if if they're when we're talking, you know, if I've got them sitting down and, and we're talking, then the sticks have to be on the ground and they have to be away from hands. Um, that's an old teacher thing of mine, but you know, if I, I say, if I hear a stick rattling, it's not doing it by itself. It's your hand is doing it. Um, so, uh, so I do make sure that that, that that happens as well, but that's, that's basically how, how, how I do it. And it's, you know, you, 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 you watch and you just take, you just take care. And you've got somebody who's really being a nuisance. Um, usually put an adult near them, <laughs> make sure that they're not going to do anything really nasty with that stick. But generally speaking, the children are very biddable. And they'll do, they'll do what they're asked because 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 we're working through a program there, and it's not just you know they 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 will they will they will do what they what they're asked to do because because we're doing a lot of stuff in you know in in, in the program. Do you use any other props rather than sticks? We use pipes and pool mm -hmm. noodles. Oh, brilliant yes no I don't no I, I I tend to stick to what I've got um if I'm doing border um that's yeah it it it, it it's, it's never it's never failed to work for me so I can continue to do it if it ain't broke don't try and fix it but yes I, I do know what you mean if you've got um, maybe very young children or um you know you you need to do it in a different way then you can use other props and it's not a problem yeah we we do it with a um dis um adult um uh, what would they call them? Uh, you know, special needs adults. So that's yes. when we use the pool noodles because they're a little bit over enthusiastic. Yes, quite. Yeah. Yes, I can understand that. And if you've got that situation, then yes, of course you've got to adapt. Yeah, quite right. Anything else? Other questions for Barry or any similar experiences you want to share? How, how do you address um, safeguarding? Is that coming up later? It will be coming up later. Ginny's got some got uh, some stuff on that. I know. Um, we, as I say, we always have parents in on this particular um, event, so um, it's less of an issue for us because we have the parents there. Um, but we do make sure that we got um, uh, all the DBS checks done yeah. beforehand. All, all the adults that work at the, at the at the museum have DBS, and so do I. Um, so we make sure that happens too. But yes, that's. But as I say, we have parents for that one, so it's it's less of an issue. And I I, I would never work in a school without a teacher being in the room as well. Um, you know, you have to do that. I think when I was when I did the um, uh, um, full English with uh, English with the FDSS a few years ago, um, 
you know, one of the things that we insisted on then was that there was always going to be at least one one adult, a teacher uh, in the room uh, while we were there as well, even though we were DBS checked and so on. Um, I think that's important. It is a, a requirement of our local authority um, in schools that we all have DBS, etc. Yeah. And the school records it as we go in and mm. that the teacher stays in with the class. Good, good. Yeah, that's absolutely right. It's good practice. And I think that's something that Ginny will be talking about as well later. Yeah, yeah. What if you were doing that at a festival, Barry? You know, we're not in a school setting or a, a, an after club setting. How would you you know do do festivals require extra adults or some supervision or do they just let oh, you get on with it <laughs> i i i haven't actually done any um uh youth working at festivals yeah. i know paul paul has paul scarfield's done quite a lot of it so um he might know better than i do but i i assume i would assume that if you're working in a children's festival or the children's part of the festival they would assume um uh who was it uh, ray and oh. bev Ray and Bev at, at, at Sidmouth, I'm quite sure would have would have made sure that that, that happened. I think they would have. I can Nelly come should... in on you and say no, actually, Barry. Really? Um, so with uh, yeah. the way Ray and Bev did it was if we had DBS, we shared it, but we didn't have to have DBS oh, right. um, on the basis that we are never alone with children. Right. So we have okay. a safeguarding talk on the first day. Well, we, you know, a general yeah. team for yeah. stewards and artists and teachers. Mm -hmm. Um it is preferable for us to have DBS, but actually the decision was that we don't need it because we're never alone one-to-one -one with children. Fair enough. Um, there's yeah. always generally three tutors in the room plus two stewards, mm. and we would never take a child out of the room without their parents, basically. Good. Um, so, yeah, but no, actually it's, yeah, I don't know if that's changed now with, with Dan being in charge, but that was that was the case. Um, whereas for squirrels, even though it's a similar situation, probably more adults, we've all had to be DBS checked. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good. Thanks for that. That's, that's very interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, thanks, Nelly. Anyone else? Any comments, questions? I'd just say on the safeguarding to just go yeah. back. Is there a recording of the safeguarding training that you did two weeks ago? There is, but because I'd say it was, yeah, it will oh, come out, Nelly. Okay. I was just going to say, if any if anybody didn't do yeah. that, I'd yeah. go back and yeah. watch that um yeah. from the point of view of having a safeguarding policy for your side etc yeah. and it is it is things like that it's making sure that nobody is ever alone with a child yeah yeah or we had to, it was quite an it can be quite an emotive topic so um some people asked to be removed from the video because they're asking questions yeah. about personal things so uh yeah so we have we it's not out yet but it will be out but we have got advice online for teach for um safeguarding more is more to do with in your Morris team rather than um yeah. at festivals. Mm. Covered that. So that's an interesting point. We probably should think about that. Good. Right. Uh anyone else? Right now? If not, okay. We're well, over to uh, Malkin to Jin, please. Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Brilliant. Um, I'm Jin Crew. Um, I'm currently Squire of Malkin till May. Um, I've been involved in Morris dancing, Maypole dancing, and step dancing uh, for longer than I think I'm always prepared to admit to. It's the early 70s. Um, I, we run a Caleb band, we, we sing, we do a lot of traditional singing. Um, I've been in several uh, Morris teams over the years, starting with Kithero Country Fair um, and several others on the on, on route. And at the moment, I'm also a musician for um, Royal Preston Morris Men and uh, Belfagan occasionally. Um, so um, I'm a secondary school teacher and I've run teenage um Morris teams for uh 15 years or so and we've taken them abroad and all up and down the in British Isles um and they, they've played their own music and done their own dancing and even taught some of the younger ones so um I've recently my experience however partly to my regret has been entirely in primary schools or community groups um, we haven't managed to actually find our way into secondary schools again, and I would I would love to do that. So if anybody's got any ideas for that, I'm open to ideas. Um, can I introduce my friend Sue, 
who are you going to talk about yourself or am I going to talk about you? Uh, I can say, yeah. So I worked um, in a primary school for a long time. I was head of Key Stage 2 and I used to dance in the 80s with Clitheroe Country Fair. That was how I met Jen. Uh, and now I can't dance anymore because I've got a gammy knee, but I do enjoy going into the school workshops. Yeah. Sue underrates herself as well. She's also a musician um, for the team um, and the whipper in. So we're very glad to have her. So that, that's our background. And you, you might ask why we go into schools. Um, we're very keen on outreach. We think that often there's not an immediate payback, but I think there will be in the future. We were horrified when we set up Malkin to find that nobody around here knew about Morris dancing. Um, and yet they've, they've some very illustrious teams quite recently so that, that's part of our uh, aim and the fact that it's healthy and fun and I'm sure you all know why you do Morris dancing so um, what what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through how we actually organize it so a lot of this is, is basic detail and, and things that I hope will be a hint I've already picked up several things I'm going to try from Barry's talk so I hope if if that's if we manage to achieve the same for you we'll be very happy um, the, the, once you know you've got a booking or you know that you're going, you want to start um, doing the work in schools, um, you really first need to recruit a team. I've done workshops over the years, quite a lot of them, just by myself. You can play. You can tell what I play, can't you? <laughs> Constantina, yes. <laughs> um, you can run the workshops and you can do it by yourself, but it's hard work. Um, it's a lot easier if, if you can recruit a team. And over the last three or four years, Malkin has uh, produced loads and loads of people who will help. Um, can I perhaps have a look at the picture? Um, just, just so you see that they're quite disreputable looking. Um, there you go. And Sue Boardman should be on that one as well. So, okay, thank you very much for that. Um, to go back, it, that's it. Um, so we've got more and more members from the team. It, it takes some building up. It, it, there's one or two things that people who aren't teachers don't realise that and, and things like um, it's for fun. Um, they won't get it right entirely, but they can get very close to it. So it doesn't matter if they're on the wrong foot, as long as it doesn't spoil the, the rest of the dance. So, and also the, the bit about not talking across each other, which is because people are keen and psyched up, they want to talk at the same time. And really, there should only be one person talking at, at any one time, whoever it is. <laughs> so they're, they're sort of the basics that you, you need to politely somehow get people to understand. Once you've got your team, and that does include the musicians, of course, we have quite a, a, a number of those people who are mu musicians as well. And they will help out with both. They will help out with the dancing or they'll help out with the music. And that's, that's brilliant. Um, we try to have as representative a, a number of people as we can. So we try to make sure that we've, we've got men and women for, as dancers, which is why Royal Preston quite often contribute to dancer in full kit, as, as we would be teaching it in kit. Um, um, so sometimes we, we try to have people of different ages and different ethnicities as well. Not always successfully, but we, we do try to have that because we want them to see Morris dancing is available to everybody at every age. Um, so when we've done that, um, perhaps this is the time to talk about making contacts. Um, making contacts is, is often surprisingly easy. If you haven't, uh, you know you want to do it, you know you want to spread the word, but you haven't got somewhere to go. First of all, ask amongst your team, because amongst your team, you'll find that there's people with children or grandchildren or who have friends who work in schools. Uh, you get an amazing number of contacts. Um, I've got quite a few through choirs I used to sing in as well, who had teachers who realised that they were onto a good number. Um, getting the contacts also doesn't want to be about the money really if if you're in the business of trying to do this for a living i'm not talking to you really um because um you're not going to make a living i don't know very much about that um if we ever charge it would be expenses um, but we're really keen on promoting the dancing as much as anything i'm sorry if any of you are professional musicians and are horrified at this but um i wouldn't i wouldn't feel that that, that was our sort of way of looking at it so um we 
often offer um, to, we, we make it clear what we want to try and do. Um, we often offer the chance to, to produce the dance to do at a, a collective assembly or a um, school fair or a Christmas show. Um, we're trying to make it attractive to schools, but there's also quite a lot of information in the national curriculum that would relate to it. If you want to know about that and want to pass that on, the Morris Fed has a case study we did with St Stephen's in Burnley, and it has quite a few links from that. Now, I'm not an expert, but we've, we've got teachers who told us what to put in it. So uh, it's useful stuff. It ties in with things like citizenship and healthy living and, and things like that. Um, what, what I would do after that, after I've made the contacts, or well, one other thing about contacts, if you do something in the community, make sure everybody knows about it. So put it on Facebook, put, tell the local radio, if you've any contacts with newspapers, make sure people know that it's happening because that's another way that people think, oh, hey, you know, we could use that. You have to say we tried, the, the lady at the beginning um, said, suggested sending out a handout, but do you know, we found it didn't work either. The bit that works is the personal contact with somebody's daughter at a school, that sort of thing is, is by far the best way, the people that you know, uh, but it spreads. So you're not just sticking with your own limited contact because you, you go to one school and then another school's in contact with them. And so it does, it does work, but it's the personal contact. Um, the, 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 after that, I forgot to mention the thing I meant to start with, which is insurance. I usually start with insurance. Don't do it if you're not insured. If you belong to the Morris Fed, you are insured because you're insured for outreach work. But I would never in a million years go into schools or go into community groups without being insured to do that. So please do make sure you're insured. After that, we draw up a plan. Um, this sounds really, really teacherish, but it's a one sheet piece of paper. It has an outline on it um, and it includes all the information everybody needs. So it will include names like contact details, what you're planning to do, although with the proviso that, you know, when you get there and see the children, you, you, you at liberty to change your mind. <laughs> Um, you would, um, it would have things like the equipment that you're going to use, the dates and the times. Um, so absolutely anything that would be really useful to have on one sheet, you put it on one sheet and then you send it around to everybody. So everybody knows exactly what's, what's the plan is. And the thing is that once you've got plan frame, it, it, it's nothing of a job to fill it in with a different school. It, and it just makes life Everybody knows what's happening and it makes us all a lot happier. Right, so we get to the school, we arrive early, we set up early. Um, sometimes you get to the hall and it's a different shape from what you expect if you haven't done a preliminary visit. Technically speaking, you should do a preliminary visit. Um, it's a sensible thing to do if you're ever organising anything with children to know where they're going to be and what you're doing. Um, we can't always manage it, but uh, we, we do our best. Then. Um, so you got there early, children come in, all the information about keeping the teachers there, keeping the, the assistants there um, is, is really important. In schools, on the whole, we've never, never had a problem um, with children not doing what we're told because the teachers are on the case straight away and the children tend to behave. I'm aware of that. that, that means we're probably going to have a terrible situation the next time we go out, but so far, so good. And we explain what we're going to do. And then Susan, Sue starts and she does warm ups. And she's going to tell you about that. Yeah, well, we want the children to enjoy the session and to get the maximum out of the session and to hopefully leave with um, enthusiasm about Morris. So when they come in, um, we want them to be really focused and really engaged. But here's a big group of children, there might be 36 of them, and they come in and they might sit down in two long rows or they might sit down in a little bunch and you want to engage them straight away. So we usually do a quick warm up, which involves them sitting where they are, you don't have to move anywhere. And just a really simple game that will get them concentrating. So it could be a, a musical thing when you clap a rhythm and get them to repeat it. Or it could be something like Simon says or Grady says. Um, I don't do that one because they probably don't when they were a bit younger. So they might think it was a bit babyish. But there's a whole host of activities 
I quite often do one called Tall Tower, can I demonstrate? Yes. So I'll make eye contact, I'll make a comment about eye contact and I'll say whoever I point to and whoever I make eye contact with, when I say Tall Tall Tower, I want you to put your hands in the air for a second. Tall Tall Tower. Tall Tall Tower. And <laughs> that, that might engender some fun, but then I'll mix it up with terrible, terrible trouble and they've got to say trouble before I say trouble and there's always great hilarity. By which time most children are focused, they've got eye contact with you and it's a bit of a springboard for the rest of the session. So there's lots of little circle games that you could use, that you can adapt for them not being in a circle. Um, the songs, I don't know if anyone knows the song Tall Straw Hat, so Tall Straw Hat, Short Straw Hat, Wide Brim can do that and then do the opposite actions or get them to do, but anything to get them concentrating, thinking, realising that the session they've really got to think about it. Um, resources for games, I use this one which is out of print, but you might be lucky and get it on a second-hand bookshop, and it's the Woodcraft Folk Book of Games. And another really good resource for quick five-minute games is the book called Keywords by the Council for Colony Holidays. Long out of print, but there is a PDF doing the rounds, and I think you can get it if you just Google Keywords Colony Holidays. And then having done a little warm-up, just two or three minutes, that's all, then hand over to Jim who will introduce them they're then ready to get into sets or to listen or whatever so we've got them we often the next thing you need to do is to teach them to skip it's a sad thing but true there's a lot of the school children these days don't know how to skip and you can do follow my lead around um or you can uh do even you can do mirror actions so they have to mirror each other um and, and that sort of combines as a warm-up but also to make sure that they've got the equipment to be able to uh actually dance so once we've done that we divide them up um usually we're doing northwest processional so we would like them in eight four lines of two lines of four um so we line them up in lines of four and then we sort out the sets it's easier than telling them to get into eights um and then we start. As far as I'm concerned, for teaching, I start with the feet and then move onwards. And we make a joke of it. If you can't cope with feet and hands, get your feet right, because at least you'll be in the right place. Um, so we, we learn. And I, I would teach, um, it depends on the group, um, but I would teach something like a Simplified Worley or a Blackburn, a dance we learned from Royal Preston. Um, or... Um, possibly even a version of the black rod dance. So we, uh, but we, if we, we wouldn't normally teach under year three, um, if they're very capable, then we just teach the dance. If if it's likely to be too complicated, then we just choose one or two figures and simplify them. So we teach um, a chorus and tell them they're going to do it lots of times. Um, so they can get it better and better and then a couple of figures and then we sit them down for a while um, for um, a bit of information because we're, we're quite keen that they, they know more about the, the Morris. Um, we, we always start off by asking them who's seen Morris dancers and almost always it's Cotswold dancers that they think of. So we've, we've got it. I'm just going to move the screen now. Sorry if it makes you feel a bit travel sick. Um, we've got these screens uh, and I'm not very good at coordinating that sort of thing, these screens, and they have um, the local dance teams. We've got about eight to ten local da dance teams doing different sorts of dance. So you've got the sword, you've got the border, you've got some stepping. There's another one there, if I can... Unlikely. I don't know if you can see it. The screens are, are expensive at the start, they're about £200, but they are so good for um, the children realising that there are lots of different traditions and what our tradition is. So, um, we all do things like this. You may not be able to recognise it from here, but round here there's a tradition of backstreet maple dancing. It, it only seems to be round here, so we, we've taken things like that. I was carrying it out of the school once and 
going home time and her mum saw it and I'm, I'm going there fairly frazzled you know it's been a long day and I'm and, and she says oh, what is to do that streets oh, fantastic and then she went bright red and disappeared but it was quite encouraging because it was a visual aid that had certainly worked and not only that but it gave us some more to research that's a bit of a, a side really but we're interested in in the research of for maple dancing around here so to go back to the um, children sitting there, um, we show them a little bit about that, about the different sorts of maypole, um, Morris dancing, or maypole dancing if we're doing that. Um, we ask them where it comes from and they give us all sorts of interesting answers and we don't really give them a very good answer ourselves because the origins are so lost in the mists of time and depending on the traditions as well. Um, but that I think is an issue in itself. Um, we also ask the musicians what they're playing, so the musicians get to introduce their instruments. And, and, and every Morris musician knows their instrument and why they play it, so we get some really good answers. Because it's loud, because it's portable, um, because it's traditional. It's, and then we ask the Morris dancers why they do Morris dancing as well, and that's fascinating. I'm just about to try it out on Sue. Sue, why do you do Morris dancing? Well, well, because it's a long tradition and when you're dancing, it's like you're at the front of a line of people going back into history who've done that same or a similar dance before you. And it keeps you fit and it's good fun and you make friends and yeah. So we, we get lots of answers about why we do Morris dancing. And, it, and it's a good question to ask yourself because we tend, we tend to do it and not think about it. Actually, there's nothing much better than being with all your mates, doing something creative, a performance. You're getting two sets of answers here for why we do Morris dancing. So we are, we ask the people who are there um, and we always get a variety of answers. Um, and by that time, they've got their breath back. So we go back, we redo all the steps we've done so far to make sure they can remember them. What Barry said about going over and over the figures is, is really good. Um, but tell them when they get it right. It's so important and pick on the group that's got it right. And if there's somebody who's really not coping, think of an alternative activity. We always have, for example, spare percussion. Um, we also allow some to be squires at the front. And if they're really good, and sometimes the ones that are the most trouble are also the ones who are the best at it, we get them to call. So we, we either get them to call one figure for everybody or we get them to call for their set. Um, and that works far better than you would think it would, even with year threes. Um, so and that also works for any children who might not be able to dance because they've yes. twisted their ankle or whatever. Absolutely. Um, so they're still engaged and part of it. Yeah, I think it's really important that everybody feels part of it in the class. We would be very unhappy if somebody was completely out of it, unless it was for a particular um, a special need reason. Um, to, to continue, we do, we do perhaps another couple of figures. We get the dances. We, we've, we do a grand performance at the end. Um, we do the grand performance but before we do that we have another quick you know questions and answer session and what went well and we asked them what went well and what would be better if uh you know could could we have done it better um and, and those are useful questions they're useful for us and i think they're probably useful for the children as well to help them evaluate what they've done um so we do the grand performance um and that's we've got more or less to the end there we've got um we thank everybody. We make sure that there's lots of applause for the dancers. We point out in every uh, performance that um, something that was really good. So we make sure, watch out for this. Did you see how they did that? It's really, really important to always be positive. I know you all know that. You wouldn't be negative anyway, but it just you really need to pick out the good bits so that the others learn from it. Um, so the oh, yes. Um, we use short sticks, usually without bells. Um, we would do the first bit of the feet work probably without the sticks, and then we would give out the sticks. Um, we our, Ours are really only about maybe a foot long with ribbons on. 
But we, we have them, we lay them out, if it's in a school hall, we lay them out on the benches, the PE benches first in groups of 16, so that each set or one person from each set can go and collect them for their team. Um, and then at the end, they go and put them back in the same place. And that prevents stick chaos. I also, because because we have to make the stick, so we also point out, please hold them by the wood bit because otherwise the top comes off sooner or later uh, and don't you don't hold them except when you're actually dancing so the when they're sitting yeah. there, like just like barry says yeah. on, on the floor away from your hands and um, we don't have bells on most of them any longer because it gets expensive with bells <laughs> but the, the ribbons are still quite uh, visible um after the event write up a review Again, you could do it with a framework if you wanted one. Just what went well, what we would like to do differently another time. Um, it, it's worth doing. That way, if you send that out to the people who've been involved, they pick up what went well and what went, and, and they come up with suggestions as well. We're very much a team effort. And if somebody suggests something, we all consider it and work out whether it's going to fit in. And, you know, so it, it, the working as a team, Doing the research, uh, doing the um, uh, outreach is actually a, a very important part of our, our team relationships now, I think. Um, we did last year, we did a, about 40 workshops. We've done them um, all over the place. Um, we, we've do them round. We've done women's institutes. We've done um, Rotary. We've done Cubs and Brownies. Um, we did Preston Town Centre um, workshops. Um, like, I don't really want to go over the safeguarding because you really have covered it really intensely, but um, you would not be on your own with children. Um, parents have to stay with children in, in open workshops and um, in schools, of course, the staff are there. And I, I have um, done all my safeguarding stuff. Um, we've been... We went to rugby, rugby school. We did two days of workshops in rugby school. Um, we really travel around. The most amazing experience, three of the musicians came, came with us and um, we did workshops for two days. And the very last day of all was um, we got the rugby team. We got the year 13 rugby team. Can you imagine two days of workshops? And I, I sat on my concertina case and thought, what do I do now? But do you know, they were absolutely brilliant. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because I think people are scared sometimes of going into schools. The children love it mm -hmm. and children of any age. Um, so um, don't be scared. It's good fun. Once you've done it, it's just the most tremendous feeling from our point of view, and I hope from the children's point of view. We always ask and they always tell us what was good. So, um, I think I'm just looking at my notes to see if I've covered everything. Um, I would say if anybody ever wants some advice or some help, I don't think I know any more than the rest of you do, but if, if you felt that it would be useful, please ask. Um, and if you want to borrow equipment and you're somewhere around about Lancashire, which is where we are, we're always happy to lend out equipment or musicians, as the case may be. I don't think you'll need that, but the offer's there and it's meant very genuinely. Have you anything else that we've missed? Thank you. Covered it very well. Right. Can I, no, anybody thank got you. any questions? I had a question actually about the performance. You said that the grand performance. Did you do, you do each group, sep each set separately in your grand performance? Yeah. If we anyway can, because um, often we don't have more than, say, an hour and a half. It's a sort of standard school session. So if we can, and we, I usually try and make sure, because it's it's a wonderful way of them seeing each other and seeing what works, you know, and getting the lines straight and things like that. You know, it's 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 good to do. But if, if we really push for time, then everybody does it. But it, it's that's not as, nothing like as good. No, I agree. Thank you. Um, other questions, Ab? And I, I didn't quite understand why you uh, did, don't put uh, bells on short sticks. Um, we did do, and and actually we, we have some that we, we use, but firstly the bells are the first thing that get damaged when they're dancing mm -hmm. and, and, and are very expensive yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> to keep replacing. Um, and secondly, there's the noise thing. It's, again, you, you, it's very difficult to get them very quiet. 
um, if, if we've got sticks with bells on. But having said that, they're a lot more fun. We, we, we all wear our clogs with bells on. So when we're dancing, there's a fair amount of bell noise anyway. Okay. But so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amy? So you're saying you wear your clogs. Do you do the workshops in kit or do you do them in like normal clothing? Sorry, I didn't do it in kit. Yeah, yeah. We, we usually go in kit. It's, it's, it, 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 obviously, sometimes people can't, but um, part of it is the dressing up. We talk about what we're wearing. We pass clogs round, you know, and they go, <laughs> but it's, it's all part of it, isn't it? Um, and, and how clogs are different from uh, um, shoes. Yeah. It's very embarrassing walking through town in your kit on your own. <laughs> That's what you <laughs> Nelly um, I was just going to sort of ask and apologies if I've, if I've missed it sort of um, if anyone's got sort of creative ways to work with left and right um, I know at Sidmouth we use uh, what well, the people that do the mini Morris use coloured bells I think they have red and blue wristband bells for each hand but I was wondering if anyone had sort of had any particular difficulties or particular insights with talking about left and rights in dancing as far as I'm concerned, I always do it back to front, so that the, the, if, if they want to do the right hand, I've got my left hand up, but that's the same side that they are. Um, and uh, it's it's a good idea, is that? I, I wonder whether we don't really need it because we also point out that most of the dances are either mirror mirror dances, in which case you know you should be opposite, or that you're doing exactly the same on both sides. And and we usually point that out fairly early days because it it helps them see the patterns. I think. We need to get them to, we'll say, if it's starting on the left foot, we'll say, shape your left foot. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's not it, really. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that's not very helpful to you, is it? <laughs> no, not at all. Um... Yeah, I was just sort of wondering if anybody, you know, uh, John and Jilly used the, the coloured bell system at Sidmouth, but I was wondering if sort of other people had done different things. I was also slightly thinking about the Morris Fed grants in the back of my head and oh, whether we might be able to apply for money to get coloured <laughs> yeah, bells. But I was thinking yeah. about just using hairbands without bells, but um, yeah. yeah, it would be a useful thing to have, I think, especially because yeah. I'm probably, you know, I think by by year three, you'd expect them, most of them to know their left and right. But yeah. I think with when you're doing li little Don't ones, kind on of the, the four to sixes that I'm likely to be teaching, I was thinking that actually coloured colour wristbands might be a good plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the other... Oh, sorry, carry oh, on. Sorry. Can I just say, the other thing is to leave something with them if you can. Um, we would normally leave the dance call, for example, the, 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 the notation for the dance. Um, so I read somewhere about leaving sticks with them. I'd love to be able to afford to do that, but that would get very expensive. And the other thing is we, we did our own research into um, local dances. Our angle is, I, I don't particularly have a hang up about it, but our actual team approach is that we do local dances. So, and, and that actually is of more interest to the schools as well. Yeah. Sorry. Amy, Amy's got a hand up. Um, just to say on the note of left and right, if you want to do it cheaper than with bells and stuff, when I did country dancing and stuff at primary school, we always used to have ribbon on our right wrists because then it was like ribbon, right. right for ribbon, so yeah. Mm, you could use just like it a is. cheap plastic tie. Yeah. Barry? Or, or yeah. did you say making the sticks red and white and then having them all with the right? Yeah, that's a really good idea. That's exactly what I did when I was doing Northwest with my children. I had red sticks and yellow sticks. Um, but you may have noticed in the the border dance that I did, um, we did a we did a, a star, and it was sticks in, and then it was yeah. hands in. sticks in hands in, no problem. They've got the That's in fine the if they've got sticks. Well, you got we do stick a lot of hand, hand clapping dances in the forest, <laughs> so <laughs> they really need to know their lefts and rights to do that. Oh, hand they do, yeah. And, <laughs> and 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 yes, it's not just. Uh, I think I think quite a lot beyond year three, including quite a lot of adults that I know have problems with left and right. So it is <laughs> it's actually a proper issue. And there's there's a there is a there's a there's a Facebook page about left and right um, um, uh, coordination, um, which is quite interesting. Yeah, people people with strategies for, for working out left and right in dances. There you go. Uh, we have um, we have um, hankies, you know, waivers uh, that we use with the younger children, and they're black and yellow. So they we, when we say right, we might say right is the black. So everybody has to put the black one in or the yellow one in. Mm -hmm. They're actually attached to the their fingers with a hook um with a little loop 
So with any look, we get the right colours going in. And that helps with our left and right. We do that first before we start doing any other activities. Yeah, lots of good tips that's there. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. Right, other questions or top tips to share? Does anybody uh, actually dress their children up? We we have tatters made, that we've made, and when they've completed their dance and they are doing a demonstration to each other, we put them in tatters, not hats. Hats has got another problem. <laughs> Just tatters. Does anybody else put costumes on them? We, we yeah, use... That. Oh, yeah. We use um, bands, um, but we find mostly they're not worth the effort because they're, they slide all over the place. We have got bands with bells on that we were, we, we hope to use for performances, but uh, ours come to us in PE kit anyway, which looks a bit like a... It's not as exciting, I suppose, but if you wanted to make them look smart for a performance, that's probably the best we could manage. Yeah, I've got, I've got, Anybody tatter, else? I've got tatter jackets that I use when I'm doing schools. Mm. Um yeah. And, but but not enough for a whole class. So again, as you say, it tends to be um, just the group that's, that's gay, just the group that's working. Mm. But so I'm well, I'll put the jackets on them. So yes, it's quite nice to to dress up. Mm -hmm. and certainly, it's if I'm down. when we when we did the the full English, um, we had costume. We did costume making at school because it was a long it was a long um, mm. uh, a process. So um, there was time for them to do some artwork in school and some craft work mm. and to make costumes um, in school, which was which was great because they looked fantastic at Birmingham Town Hall when we when we performed. Um, and I know that with our the the, the Morris Fed um, uh, Arts Council project that we're doing at the moment, that's one of the things that we're that we're in, incorporating in that is mm. is schools make. Um, some costumes it's part all, as all as part of the process mm. I had this, we, we I, I'd forgotten until you said it but we used to do a lot of work we did schools festival we do we do a, a, a weekend fest um, of bringing schools into the, art, the secondary school I worked in to do dances and we do artwork we design dances we um, um, design kits like you say and, and learn dances and, and finish off with a concert but it's it's quite a while ago you, you can't in, in my experience now it's very difficult to do something like that because there just isn't the uh, teachers who can be involved this this so tied down with what they have to do already you know it's it's just it's too much and you wouldn't want to do it without the, the support of all the teachers so but it, it was fun whilst it lasted and we used to use it as a link between secondary school and primary school so I'd go into primary schools and um, do, do the same sort of thing really, and have a day in with them. Yeah we used to in Pendle we used to have um, going years back a festival where all the primary schools learnt folk dances as you described Barry and then met together for a grand Cayley at the finish but sadly that's gone now but it was and they all designed their own costumes yeah. Yeah, sad, sadly it's gone from us as well. It it, it just mm -hmm. died there. It was when teachers just weren't able to come to the workshops and yeah. uh, didn't yeah. have the time to do the, unfortunately, to do the teaching. But yeah, there was a time when we used to get Saturday morning, we did two Saturday morning workshops and we would have yeah, yeah, we did. 25 yeah. teachers turning up on a Saturday morning to learn dances. Wow. You know, but it doesn't happen now. I can understand mm -hmm. why. There's still lots we can do. There's still lots we can do, but it's yeah, but it's all down to us though, isn't it? That's we're not getting the the input from the teachers anymore. No. Okay. But Any other be... questions? Oh, go on. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I keep on cutting. Go on. We, we, you can make life easier for the schools if if you can make things as easy for the schools as possible, which is what a, a lot of our organisation is set up to do. Then then you, I think you get in there. Yeah. I think Ab put his hand up. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I have a very... One of the largest parts of my job is running the Morris at one particular festival, and we've been given a 50-minute, 50 50 minute, half, hour and a half? Anyway, not very long. Uh, kids' workshop, it's going to be outdoors. I'm not the one teaching it, but anyway. Um, I want to hand out... I want to hand out, like, some colouring in as the kids leave, like, the... the um, workshop like it's not the kind of place where we can realistically do any hat decorating or anything and I don't know how many kids will get or what ages they'll be or anything like I don't know does that sound like an okay idea just to leave them with 
coloring in of a Morris dancer to? Shall I tell you what we do? Sorry, I keep interrupting again. But, um, we do word searches because I'm, I, I was also an English teacher at one stage and we're into key vocabulary. And so we've a, a range of word searches and on the whole, children like them. Now, that's nothing like as exciting as doing a hat or colouring in a Morris dancer. But it, it, from an educational point of view, it was all right. The children liked it. Words. Okay. You can and get word like search machines online. They'll, 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 they'll do yeah. the work for you. You just put in the yeah, words. Yeah, yeah, sort of those. We might get, you know, a bunch of preschool kids as well, though. So, like... Yeah. I'm thinking a bit of a bit of craft, like something to take it's home and colour in after the festival. I think mean, colouring in would be really good. I think they'd enjoy it. Or, or making up their own kit from if, if you've got an outline of a Morris dancer, making up their own design mm. coat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like because hmm. they'll be they'll be it's like right. gosh, people people in about four or five different kits at the festival, so. They'll get to see variety. Well, we went on a we went on a Morris tour. Sorry. And uh, part of the activities, they gave an activity sheet for the whole tour, and you had the outlines of Morris dancers, and you had to colour them in uh, exactly the same as the teams who were there. Oof. I know. Mm. Oh. <laughs> and that was for adults. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't ask kids to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a really good bus tour exercise. It was a good bus tour exercise. Yeah, like we normally but, have a quiz, but actually, like yeah. for our family weekend, I think giving out coloring sheets on the bus tour would be brilliant. Yeah. It, it bus, wasn't the only bus. thing. There's plenty of other stuff as well, but they just um, reminded me. So I think coloring in. Everyone likes coloring in, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Last year, last year there was this lady watching a workshop at this festival, and um, she like sketched like a small portion of the scene. And then watercolor painted it in, and I was like, "Can I please take a photo of this? This is amazing." She was like, "It's nothing special." It's like the dancers <laughs> loved it, though. Like this lady sketched and painted us while we were dancing. Yeah. It was great. So yes, mm. everyone likes coloring in. Yeah, I along with that. Ab had his hand up, I think, a while ago. Sorry, Ab. No, no, it's all right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I wonder when, when you do hanky dances, could you give some examples from uh, hanky dances you do then? We don't do hanky dances. Oh, are no, you talking to, who are you talking to? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Hi, it's Sharon. You can't see me, but can you hear me? Yes. Um, so, yeah. we, um, so we do um, workshops with uh, mainly eight plus, uh, I think older cubs and scouts, we've done a few now. Um, we've done hanky dances, we, well we generally do Bonnie Green because it's fairly easy to teach, um, but I miss the furry capers right off the end because that's just, it takes too long to teach them to do furry capers. Mm. Sometimes I put in, we either put in extra waves or we teach them just to do like a jump and a, and a flick with the hankies. Um, but from our workshop experience, um, we um, we tend to put the kids in groups of four um, because we found that cubs and scouts have four or five leaders with them. So we put kids of groups of four, one of the cub or scout leaders, and then one of uh, a Morris dancer. So there's generally two adults in each set of six, as far as possible. Um, we use Young Collins Oddington as a dance uh, because the sticking is uh, fairly simple and it's stationary, so there's not a lot of movement in the chorus. So it tends to be a bit of a sort of a safer option in terms of giving children a stick. Um, we find it's difficult to teach a hay, um, so we generally demo a hay rather than try and explain it. Um, hitting the floor, we've had. Uh, we have to consider the the. The condition of the floor. So we, we we did a scout group last week, and they had quite a nice parquet floor. So we had to sort of tell them not to hit the floor and just pretend to to hit the floor. So uh, so we didn't damage it. Um, sticks. We generally use our own sticks, but we try and match sort of big sticks to big kids and little sticks to little kids. And um, we we have to do stick safety right at the beginning because there's always one that will run around and try and hit the friend with a stick. Um, and DBS checks. We, we've never been asked if any of us have had, had DBS checks. Um, 
but generally we would always make sure there's at least one adult representative from their group in the group and generally clubs and scouts we found there's always four or five adults within their group anyway um but we do have people in our team that have got dbs checks because they work with children for their sort of their normal job during the day but we've never had a problem with it we've never been asked for it and um, i think i think that's it from me my my general rules <laughs> thank you sharon that's excellent right any more questions or tips they want to share one, one thing that I think is important that I forgot, um, you can do maypole dancing with people in wheelchairs. Yes, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It works surprisingly well. <laughs> please, please tell. Expand. Well, just... <laughs> They're in a wheelchair. You have to have the rest of the people you know, making allowances, but they can they can do a weave if they want to. They can do the going around the maypole with the different colours and the in, ins and outs and everything. And it is just fabulous because often there are people who come along to, to the workshops don't expect to be involved. And we, we've had two or three, uh, we've had a, a maypole with two or three wheelchairs going around. You just have to make sure people know about keeping the ribbons high, like Barry says, and, and uh, allowing a little bit of extra space. It's not a bad lesson for them to learn, really because then they, you know, they should take more space, so. That's so cool. Mm. Sorry, <laughs> I keep remembering things. No, that's a good tip. Has anybody else had experience of um, children with disabilities in their groups? Yeah. Yes, in schools, we quite often come across somebody or at least one or two in the group that have got some issues. Sometimes mm. it can, it might be a wheelchair. We've had them on with a wheelchair. Sometimes it's just they've got, um, you get quite a lot now with physical mobility. They might have a walker or something like this. And, and as you say, really, it's just a case of planning and making sure we've got plenty of space. Generally, if it's in a class, the other children are very aware of them, so mm. they know how to cooperate, mm. if you like, with them. Um, but yeah, we've had, you maybe not get as complex, <laughs> but we certainly can go in and out and round each other. Um, but as I said, for us, for Maypole, we've only got a small Maypole. It only takes um, eight dancers at a time so in a way that just makes it easier but it's not very high so well that's why we're looking for a, a taller maypole <laughs> but yeah it works so fine <laughs> how tall is the maypole you've got Jin? But... i think it's about 10 feet it's the one that's the stand i can't remember the name of the people who sell it but if you if you google looking for maypoles you'll find it and it's excellent it breaks down into the back of a small estate car, but it's oh, very right. secure. Um, you might want people, to, you might want to put weights on the base, but actually, usually we're all right with it. Um, it it's, it's a really, and it does, it take, it has up to 24 ribbons in four colours. Yeah. It's it's a, it's a really good one to get. It's quite expensive. I think it's about 400 pounds, but yeah. worth having. <laughs> do, you, can, do you know where you got that from? If if you wanted to email me afterwards, or I can email um, Pauline and yeah. tell her where I got it from. Yeah, um, it's yeah. it's free, it's fairly freely available. If if you um, go I think on, it was on Amazon you... or somewhere, wasn't it? No, it wasn't it on was. Amazon. It was on Amazon. Yeah, yeah it was. So yeah. it was easily to find. Okay. Uh, but Gay, we'll, do apply we'll... to us. Do apply to us because we funded the one for Malkin. That one. Yeah. yeah. The Morris Federation yeah. funded it. So do please apply if that kind of money is out of your reach it it, it is too tall for some low ceilings um mm. so you know 10 feet is i think most ceilings are about eight feet so you would need but if you're in a hall somewhere you'd have no problem with it i don't think outdoors is fine and it, as i say it breaks down into I, I can do it by myself if i have to i can put it up and put it in the car and everything so it's it's manageable Thank you. Right, well, any more for any more? If not, then I think I think 
both Barry and Jin are happy to be contacted. Is that all right? Yeah, if, no if 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 you need and Sue and Sue, of course, for warm ups and uh, games. I like the idea of the actually. If you could send me the 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 links for the books. I'll put that in the email if I can find the links for the books, for the game books. Um, yeah. So anything, uh, if you want to speak with them, uh, send me an email and I'll pass you on. Um, otherwise, can we unmute and give a round of applause to? Oh look, what Lee's made. Lee's made a sash. <laughs> what Lee's have been talking? A sash look at for that. Clogging. Yeah, hey. fantastic. And uh, this one's for my friend, and this one's for me. Oh, very nice. Wow, I like them. <laughs> yeah, we like them. Yeah, we're going to wear them over black because we live in cities two thousand kilometers apart, and we are meeting up at this festival to clog together. So we're making up a kit for a side that doesn't exist. Yeah, very good. <laughs> well, it's very lovely. I like it a lot. Thank you. <laughs> I it's like it. It's simple and effective. It's up. going to be really good. Yeah. All right, so can we just give a round of applause for Barry and Jin, please? Unmute yourselves. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much for coming. Any questions? You're bound to think of something afterwards. So, yeah, do email me. Yeah. And Thank you so much for... for having me. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> Away from yeah, Australia. Yeah, hopefully we'll meet some of you in September. Where are you? Where are you in September? Uh Lancashire. Oh, are you? Whereabouts? Yeah. You coming up for? Um, oh, are you at uh, Clogfest? I'm. I'm going to the clogging competition. Yeah, clog comp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The the Cheshire and Lancashire one. Yeah. The big one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well, you're near us then. Come <laughs> see Malcolm. <Malcolm's>. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's honestly like I'm gonna meet up. I'm finally gonna meet like Robin and Jen and like a whole bunch of other people. Mm. And shall I tell you something? I used to teach yes. Robin. Oh really? Believe it or Robin, not? Robin's been teaching me. Yeah, well, I used to teach her a long time ago and she started step clogging with me. There you go. Aww. And she's tons and tons better than I am now. <laughs> but that doesn't take much well, now doing. That, now that she's got her title three times in a row, it's my turn. <sighs> As far right. as concerned. So that's why I'm coming to, to England. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, not in practice. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll, come um... to Rivington. Come to everywhere. <laughs> there you go. We'll get you we'll get you an itinerary for every night of the week. <laughs> I bet you will. <laughs> we could if you I want. Bet you know, I would actually really love that. No, let's do that. Yeah. 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 yeah um you've got my email now. So Yeah, tell us when you're coming and um yeah, I'll probably arrive in sometime in August, leave sometime after the competition, but only I'll only be there probably for about five weeks. Yeah. I need to be back in Australia for the National Ale at the end of September. So not too long after the competition, but before it. Before. Okay. Yeah. Right. 